In this video, uh, which is part of the fundamentals of electrical circuits, we're going to focus on introducing frequency selective circuits, uh, very commonly, <clears throat> very commonly referred to as filters. And these devices, their job is to basically accept input. And I'm going to use the general term for input here. It could be voltage, it could be current. Uh, at this point, we don't really care. But we want to just say we're going to have some input that is put in there and some output that comes out of here. And what we want, if this is a filter, for example, it will have a, a range of frequency that can make it through and a range of frequency that would be rejected that won't make it through the outputs. From here on, we commonly refer, use X to refer to input to our systems. And system is simply something that has an input and has an output. And then YFT is referred to as an output. So, this device will have some sort of a um, characteristic. Um, the characteristic is determined by sending a signal and figuring out what the output is. Uh, we will cover this in much more detail in later videos, but for now I think it's sufficient for us to just remember the name for this characteristic equation for the system is referred to as impulse. response uh, impulse function response okay now um, because to make a filter in in a passive passive meaning we don't have any active devices so we are only using our resistors we are we're using uh, inductors and we're using capacitors um, well, so uh, and we're building the filter out of those three elements so, um, since we're using only those to build a circuit, uh, we can literally use everything that we've learned in phasor domain analysis, um, which uh, was basically reliance on the fact that we our inputs are um, our inputs are uh, sinusoidal sine and cosine mostly we use cosine as a as a commonality sinusoidal steady state okay so the circuits are running in a steady state they're not just turn on not just turn off so not step respond natural respond we're very much interested in them running at some steady state see how they normally operate and we're going to take advantage of a phasor domain. Now, if you remember, a phasor domain, when we take a um, time domain signal like X of T, we would convert it to something that would be in terms of J omega um, uh, numbers. So here we write that one as a capital letter J omega, and we know this is more or less a complex number. And uh, when we for it, when we did a phasor domain, so we had the time domain here. Now we're gonna go to the phasor domain here, and then the h of t we're gonna write as h of j omega, and then uh, of course y of t will become capital letter y j omega. Okay. Some uh, since this this idea eventually will be expanded beyond sinusoidal uh, steady state at later discussions, but for now we're to, that is the case. But just to make sure we create a commonality in the future, we're gonna basically rename J omega as just S. If you want to think about it, just replace it so it's easier to write it. So instead of writing X of J omega, sometime you will see written as x of s instead of h of j omega we will sometimes see it written as h of s and sometimes this is written as capital letter y of s okay now 
why is this interesting? This is interesting because if you recall, when we went to phasor domain, all the relationship became algebraic. So we're going to basically say, okay, uh, this and this is something you want to remember. It's very important. Uh, H of S is referred to, is named transfer function. And remember, in phasor domain, omega is the only thing that is changing. Therefore, S is the only thing that's changing. In the phasor domain, we define this as being the output over input. This is very powerful, and hopefully you can see it, in that we're basically saying that um, this, this thing, uh, H of S, if I have it, you give me an input x of s, I can give you y of s because I can simply you know, do an algebraic work on this thing and find out that y of s is simply h of s times x of s. So that's pretty nice. So all my system are going to be describing it as an equation and I can multiply my input by that transfer function and get my output. That's where some of the power of this comes in. Just to refresh you, H of S is a complex number, so H of S, when you're finished with it, H of S is going to have a magnitude, and then it's going to have also an angle, and that's equal to the magnitude of Y of S, I shouldn't have drawn this big line, magnitude of Y of S divided by magnitude of X of S. And then the angle is going to be angle of the output minus angle of uh, phase of input. So that's one way to look at it. So this becomes pretty powerful when we try to describe a circuit. Like uh, um, let's let's talk about this. So 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 we can think if you want to. Let's let's focus. Although we can look at phase and we can look at all of those things, let's focus on magnitude. Let's focus just on the magnitude as a way of describing what the fil what the different systems are, what the different filters are. Magnitude of transfer function is equal to is h of s. And then magnitude is based simply is the y of s magnitude, the output magnitude, divided by magnitude of x of s. Just just so not to cause confusion, you will some many times see us, and I'm going to go back and forth just to make sure you're comfortable. This is simply j omega. So don't get confused if somebody writes a j omega. So when, when, when manipulating this time, sometimes it's easier to write it as j omega because you can see what's come, what part is imaginary, what part is real. So don't get confused if someone write the same thing as h of j omega equal to y j omega over x j omega. It's the same thing. Okay. Now, um, filters. We're going to use now these concepts we've learned to do filters. So let's say uh, one case, let's say let's talk about a filter. There are four kinds of filter and we're going to go through it. One of the first one we usually cover is called low pass filter. And what the idea here is that, that we're going to be able to pass the low lower frequencies and stop the higher frequency for going through. So how would we use the knowledge of final function transfer to describe this? The way we do this, we're going to draw a thing like this and we say, okay, here I've got the magnitude of H of S on the vertical axis. And on the horizontal axis, you can either say omega or say S really doesn't matter. So as you go in this direction, omega starts at zero DC and increases as it goes toward the arrow and H of S grows this way. So since this is a passive filter, the output can never be bigger than input. What does that mean? Well, if output can never be bigger than input, that means one is the maximum value. So the maximum value of H of S 
is one. That, what does that mean? Well, that means that if, if H of S is equal to one, everything that comes in goes out. So if it's a low pass filter, it goes to some place at some frequency, we usually call that omega C, double C, and that's, that's called the cutoff frequency. And then this flattens out. Okay, so if you if you think about this, everything that comes in goes through at this point, and since H of S is equal to zero, nothing gets out. Doesn't matter what you put in, nothing. So this is usually called the stop band, and this is called the pass band. Okay, now if this is low pass, how about the how about the reverse of this? The reverse of this, the second type that we have, is called high. So high pass filter again, H of S, magnitude of H of S, or H of J omega if you like, and then omega. So in this case, you basically have the reverse where uh, this is zero up to here and then pops up. Now what's the maximum? The maximum is one. We, have, we are designed, this is a low pass filter passive using only resistor inductors and capacitors, okay? If you later on, we learn about active devices and then we can have a gain bigger than one, but for now it's one. So this is now the pass band and this is called the stop band. Okay, so that's um, that's where we are now. Uh, there are a couple other ones that, just to be complete, let's cover those. We've got a band pass. So sometime we want frequencies between two a range of frequency to go, not from zero to something, but rather from one frequency to another frequency, like your radio, when you're listening to a radio station, you're listening to a range of frequencies. In that case, if you want to do a band pass, same, same configuration, you've got H of S magnitude here, and you've got omega here, but this time, you got your frequency, the stop band here, at some point, it gives you blitz things through and then stops things from going through. So usually we use two numbers, omega C1, let's say on omega C2. Again, this is stop band. This is a stop band. Only frequencies in this range pass through. Now, pretty much done. Now, since we had low pass, kind of the opposite was high pass. Now we have band pass. There's an opposite of that, which is called band reject. And from the name, you can kind of hopefully guess what it does. It basically, as we have magnitude of H of S here, and then we have omega here, the band reject that's kind of the opposite of what the band pass does. So it rejects, it stops all frequencies from this range to this range, and then passes all the stuff lower than the omega one and higher than omega two. Now you've kind of seen all the major uh, fundamental filters. So in this case, we talked about low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, band reject. And I have defined them in terms of um, um, their magnitude. Of course, you can, once you do the circuit, you can also um, figure out the phase if, you, if that's what you want to do. So we introduced the transfer function. The definition of transfer function is here. We just defined it. And then how did we get H to X of S or H of S or J omega? We basically was a phasor domain transformation from X to X of T to X of J omega, Y of T to Y of J omega. And um, that was an introduction to selective um, filters uh, these are called passive because they only have RLC. And what we're going to do in the next future videos is we're going to take each one of these filters and get a little deeper. What do they look like? If I want to build a low pass filter, what would I have to do and put some of the things we've learned here into practice?